y'all. We will be in my kitchen in a hot minute because I am back with another What I Eat In A Day video. So excited because it's been a hot minute since I've done one of these. I'm going to be showing you guys some low carb and healthy recipes that you guys can use to lose weight, maintain weight, or if you just want to eat healthy. So I'm super excited. I even have a dessert option in there and you guys know. I live for dessert. This video is actually in collaboration with Thrive Market. You guys know I've partnered with them before on two other videos and I'm obsessed because they are like Whole Foods but on a Costco budget. Literally all the bougie foods and all the healthy brands that you could ever want at 25 to 50% off their retail price. It's like mind blowing. Like I get things for $6 there that are like $12 in my local grocery store mind blown. At the moment Thrive Market has an offer for my subscribers where you guys are actually able to get $60 worth of free groceries plus free shipping and a 30 day trial. I'm going to leave the link to that below to check it out. I mean who doesn't want free groceries? Who doesn't want to save some money? And who doesn't want some bomb ass food? So I hope you guys like this video. Please give it a thumbs up before we get started and make sure you guys subscribe to my channel. So yes, let's go to my kitchen and let's make some food. So the first thing we are making is a breakfast wrap. And you're thinking, is that a tortilla? Is that bread I see? I'm going to tell you guys right now, this is low carb. So first of all, I'm going to start with my egg. I usually use cooking spray. And then once that's heated up, I'm just going to dump an egg in there and fry that up. Using cooking spray obviously cuts down on the oil and I will blot it afterwards. And in the meantime, I'm going to be taking these organic coconut wraps from Thrive Market. This is the best alternative to bread. I'm seriously obsessed with these. They are literally six grams of carbs and 70 calories. And all that's in them is coconut meat, basically. So they are completely low carb in a way that I have been having bread like foods without actually eating bread. So I'm going to take one of those and then I'm going to be taking also from Thrive Market. This is the Primal Kitchen Chipotle Lime Mayo, which is made with avocado oil. It's paleo, it's gluten free, it's dairy free, it's soy and canola free and it tastes freaking amazing. It's got a nice spice to it. So I'm just going to spread that all over our tortilla as our, well our coconut wrap actually, it's a fake tortilla as our egg is cooking. I'm then going to just top that with some spring mix and some arugula lettuce. I like quite a bit of lettuce. And then I also have this turkey bacon, which I pre-made the day before. It's just 100% turkey bacon. So I am taking three rashes of that because it's pure protein. And again, it's lower fat than regular bacon, but tastes just as good. I like my egg to still have a runny center. So when it's cooked, I do flip it over a little bit, but only for a few seconds. And then I'm just going to take that right out and top my wrap with that. And then I will just have it open face. Sometimes I do wrap it up to eat it, but today open face is better for presentation. And this is so good, so satisfying. I've been having this for lunch as well. Next up for lunch, yes, that's right. This is pizza and this is low carb pizza. I'm talking even lower carb than Friday pizza night because I found this Simple Mills naturally gluten-free pizza dough. It's made with mostly almond flour on Thrive Market and it is only 12 grams per slice of pizza. And all you need is apple cider vinegar as well as some virgin olive oil and then just water to make it. It's super, super simple. All that's in this is things like arrowroot, almond flour, flax meal, and then just really good ingredients. So it's completely clean and it is so easy to make. Even a two-year-old could make this. So I just go ahead and add the required amount of water it takes two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar but it doesn't taste vinegary or anything like that you can't tell and then also the olive oil right into a bowl Once you've added that, all you do is whisk that together till everything's combined for a little bit. I just have this hand mixer. It's really, really old. You could use an electronic one and then you're going to add the dough. And this actually ends up making two whole pizzas. So once you mix that all together, obviously it's going to combine and congeal until you get your pizza dough consistency. And so I will split that in half and I will usually make two pizzas and then free some of them. And what I'm going to do is spray a pizza tray with some of my cooking spray. And then you're going to want to also make sure your hands have some olive oil on them as well. Otherwise, this will stick to your hands. And all I'm going to be doing is taking one of those balls. Basically, I split the mixture into two and then pressing that out into about an eight or nine inch circle because these are pizzas that are on the smaller personal size. So once I've done that, I, mine is not a perfect circle by any means. I put it in the oven at 350 degrees for five minutes. And while that's in the oven, I'm going to prepare my sauces. So I'm using this Classico Alfredo and sun-dried tomato as well as some pesto for my first sauce. Um, I'm going to add a few things to that Alfredo sauce because, you know, me. So I'm adding a little bit of oregano. And I'm also going to add some garlic powder as well as some granulated garlic and just mix that together. And then after five minutes, the pizza base isn't fully cooked, but this is when you need to start adding your toppings. So I'm going to spread this sauce because I am making a white 
pizza today or like a rose pizza I guess you could say and I only used about a quarter cup or less of the pasta sauce and then I'm just gonna go ahead and top that with some cheese you guys know I live for my cheese this is the time where you can do any topping you want but today I've decided to go with ham this is low fat ham so I'm just gonna go ahead and spread that all over I also added in some red onions because I love red onions and some bacon because you know I was just feeling a little extra so I added a few sprinkles of some crumbled bacon and then all you're gonna do is pop that back in the oven at 350 degrees again for another 10 minutes to bake 10 to 15 until it looks done and looks like this you guys I sprinkled some pesto right on the top some dollops and added some fresh basil and this oh so good so freaking good I had half of this for lunch and it was divine I'm telling you I have to make white pizza more often or rosé for dinner, we are actually having a plant-based option. This is zoodles and spaghetti sauce. So basically, this is completely meat-free. I am having two pans, but I do end up going down to one, and I am going to be using this Gardein beefless ground. I have been loving this as an alternative to ground beef because I love ground beef, but you'll see this is low calorie and it's a lot lower fat, and it's still 18 grams of protein for a serving. So it's a way I can have ground beef more often. So I'll heat up a pan in some olive oil, and I will just add some of this frozen mixture right in. And then I found these zucchini noodles at my store I've been loving to have them because obviously I love pasta but pasta is super high carb and this is a way I get more green veggies in and so how I cook those is basically saute them in olive oil I dump them in and it maybe takes like two to three minutes because obviously you want them still to be kind of crunchy you don't want them to be soft and just like watery and zucchini has a lot of moisture in it so I just toss them in olive oil until they're heated through but still have a nice crunch to them So you can see here, those are done and those will be done really quickly. And because this pan is a better nonstick pan, what I actually ended up doing after plating the zucchini noodles was adding in that Gardein mixture right to that pan because I could and it was starting to stick. I'm adding some garlic powder as well as some dried onion and some also some oregano right in to season this up because it kind of is a plain flavor. It's not really got much flavor to it. So you can season this up. I've had it with tacos as well, which is amazing. If you guys would like a taco recipe in my next video, let me know. And again, you just want to brown this this takes about five minutes to cook as well it's a really really quick and easy dinner like no time at all and you don't have to deal with any raw ingredients or do any cleanup from raw ingredients so it's perfect and then once that's done I'm just gonna spoon that right on top of our zoodles I'm going to be using this ragu tomato and basil light um, pasta sauce. I try to use a quarter cup or less of this, but you guys can see this one is fat free. It's got some carbs in there, but it's lower in the sugar, so it's not so bad. And I'm just going to go ahead and spoon this directly on top of our whole mound. You could cook the um, meatless ground beef in this and like simmer it, but I just heat up the sauce and add it right to the top. And then this is the part where it's not quite plant based because you guys know I live for cheese. So if you're someone that likes vegan cheese or you're vegan and you eat vegan cheese, top it with that. But this is some dairy cheese because you guys know cheese is my jam and that is basically a really filling really great supper that allows me to get in a lot of protein from the garden but I'm still getting my veggies in too finally for the icing on the cake we are making dessert and these are spiced apple oat cookies oh my god fall in your mouth literal perfection so all we're going to start out with our rolled oats these are my Quaker oats that I use to make oatmeal and these are going to be gluten free as well so this is an entirely gluten free recipe on top of it all which is amazing I'm also using this Bob's red mill almond flour which I also picked up at Thrive Market it's a lot cheaper on Thrive Market than it is in like my local grocery store by a lot by like 50% so I like to get it there and I'm just adding in a quarter cup of that and then I am taking these natural dried apple rings that I basically chopped up and broke into pieces for a half cup of those this adds our apple flavor these are amazing these have become like my new addiction they're delicious and then we're going to just use our spices. So I'm taking some nutmeg. I didn't really measure my spices out. I kind of just eyeball it. I'm also going to be taking a teaspoon of cinnamon. I did measure this out because cinnamon isn't like my favorite, favorite thing. And then also a teaspoon of ginger, which I also measured out because too much ginger can make it too spicy. But I would add in maybe like a teaspoon and a half of ginger. These could have been a little bit spicier. And so that's all our dry ingredients. And then I'm taking the Thrive Market Ghee. This is going to add such an amazing buttery taste. I love it. So I'm adding a half cup of this. And I love that this ghee is um, really easy to kind of spoon out it's not thick and super super hard I'm also going to be adding some vanilla extract again I did not measure this I just kind of dab that in there and then you want to take anywhere between three to six tablespoons of maple syrup for this recipe depending on how sweet you want it I believe here I took four and I think that's perfect too sweet kind of kills the recipe for me 
And then all you're going to do once you have your dry and wet ingredients into one bowl is mix that together until it's completely combined. Now this isn't going to create a dough where everything's really bound together, but things will kind of hold and stick together somewhat. And I'm just going to use a baking sheet with parchment paper and I'm going to put that into 12 cookies on each sheet. So I have a total of 24 cookies. Kind of squish them together a little bit so they don't drop apart, but just know they're not going to hold together completely firmly. And then I will put those in the oven at 350 degrees and I'm just going to set a timer for 15 minutes these take anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes but basically you'll know they're done when the outside is golden brown and crispy and then the inside is just kind of like a light brown um, you want the inside to be chewy that's why when the outside is crispy these are perfect and these oh my god these are such a hit these are freaking delicious you have to make them Okay guys, those are all the meals and the dessert that I'm gonna show you guys. Let me know which one was your favorite and if you guys try anything, I get so excited when you guys comment and tell me you tried it and what you thought. Definitely let me know in the comments below and if you guys have any tips or anything you would like to share, definitely do that. I wanna start doing these what I eat in the days more often, especially since I'm the super picky eater, so this kinda shows you guys the foods that I eat if you're picky like me. We'll see eye to eye. So I hope you guys love this video and I'll be back really soon with another one.